right, guys, so it's a big day. We got another new brand that we're excited to check out. Big thanks to 79 Bike for sending us their new Falcon M. We're not known for unboxing bikes, right? But we're excited to get this. It's one of the few 72 volt bikes out of the box. We're gonna add it to our personal fleet. To do that, we're gonna take it out of the box so that you know what to expect when you get it. We're gonna check it out. We're gonna start modding it to see what fits so that we can support you as a customer if you wanna continue making this bike better. But with that said, let's just get right into it. Well, we got the box off. Looks like we're gonna have to unbolt all these bolts to get the crate open and then get to the bike. Here it is, guys. Now we can actually start putting it together. Ah, that's more like it. Dude, one thing I noticed is right out of the box, this thing's super easy to put together. The front wheel's already on. All the handlebar controls are already on. It's got a direct mount stem, so all you really gotta worry about is the stem, the light, uh, the foot pegs are off, put those on. It does come with a foot peg brace, which is really cool. So pretty simple, straightforward to put together. All right, let's open up the accessory box, see what all we got in here. All right, we got the manual, number plate, all your spare bolts looks like to do your direct mount stem, charger, and foot pegs. And some tools. If you don't have a toolbox like this, come supply the tools to build the bike. Okay, now we're gonna mount the headlight mount and direct mount stem. All pretty straightforward, it looks like. Time for foot pegs. Different size, different type bolts or nuts, but they're nylock, so we're not gonna worry about any uh, thread lock or anything. Should be on, held on just fine. 19 mil. Okay guys, front number plate, but a couple things we're gonna point out first is the bump stops for your, for your forks, the steering. They're aimed clear in like this. You need to rotate them in so as you turn, this the pointy bit here hits the frame. Then, another thing to point out, this brake line is routed properly. It's coming down through here, down the fork guard and inside the fork guard. There uh, are other brands, Talaria being one of them, that likes to route it, route it on the outside to the brake caliper. The problem with that is, on the outside of the brake, or on the outside of the fork guard, it can catch rocks, sticks, and rip your brake line off. This is the proper way to route your brake line. Make sure when you put the front number plate on, there's another one. Make sure the, your front brake cable is outside the front number plate. I, we see customers put them inside like this, and that makes it so when your forks come up that it bends your fork or your brake cable out. So behind your brake hose. Okay guys, so we wanted to get the real weight on this bike. Uh, the claim weight was, is 130. We did zero out the, the scale with the stand on it, then mounted the bike on it, put this on there just to keep the front wheel off the ground. As you can see, the actual weight is 143. We think the reason behind that, a little bit extra weight, is the social motor is gonna be a little bit heavier than say a stock light beam motor, and the 72 volt battery is obviously gonna be heavier than a stock light beam motor. So that weight isn't too bad compared to the upgrades that it has. Check that out, spring-loaded cover, so it's always protected. Okay, so plugging it in, it's got, looks like the same connector type as a Talaria. Make sure your breaker's off. Plug it in until it clicks. Breaker on, 
ready to go. Okay guys, we got battery all hooked up, key in place, turn it on. Screen will light up here. And everybody knows the best braking method for any dirt bike. Put her in sport mode and give her. Okay guys, so we got this bike put together and I gotta say it looks pretty good. I, uh, I really like the color. It's not just another black do. bike out there. A couple quick stats. It's a 72 volt battery, 35 amp hour out of the box. It's got a sweet Sotion motor on it. So that's a huge upgrade for a bike that is $44.99. Um, really, it's a nice package. Anything that you notice that really jumps out at you? Uh, a couple things. The, it has come stock with a direct mount stem, a little bit of a rise on it. Uh, a rise bar, better than any stock bar, at least, out right now. Um, what we believe are DNM forks, which looks like a decent fork. Uh, really good headlight, stock, looks like. Power, forgot to mention, it's eight kilowatts. So, get the bike, you guys put it together really quickly. Um, I think there's only one thing left to do. We gotta get out and ride it. Let's do it. All right, we're out here on the Falcon 79. Let's take you for an eighth mile run in sport mode and see how quick this bike does it. I'm on the Falcon 79 now, so let's get a feel for this thing. Ooh, the rear end is knocking. I wonder why. I'm surprised it doesn't fill as fast as I was expecting it to because I don't know, eight kilowatts in a Sotion motor. I was expecting it to be a bit faster. The power's not bad though. Like it does have power and it gets up to speed, but just a little underwhelming in my opinion. The bike feels really short got a very small form factor like just like the light B but it's super nimble because of that too like the bike's gonna go where I tell it to this thing's making a lot of noise like the drivetrain of it is sounding really loud which is weird, normally like a belt driven system is pretty quiet. I can definitely hear rattling from the, the license plate, but that's a removable thing, you know, you can get rid of that, but the actual like drivetrain itself is not feeling the smoothest right now. This bike is kind of working my hands, I'm gonna I'm gonna back off the preload, which I don't like doing because then it doesn't, it doesn't like stay on top of the travel as much. But that's weird. I feel like I'm hitting things hard enough to use all the suspension and it's only going up to this mark here. I'm not sure if you can see that. Okay, I just stiffened the crap out of the rear shock on this thing. And it feels like, like it's got no budge to it. It's like the dampening circuit closed off. So let's see, let's see how that feels. Oh, my back end's getting kicked around. That's not good. GoPro is not doing this justice, but my whole body, 
Oh, it's getting hammered right now. Dude, this suspension, like, like when you crank the dampening all the way stiff, which I do on a lot of different suspension, um, it just, it feels like it completely closes off the circuit. And this thing just becomes like a bouncy brick. Yeah. Like, I've never seen you have the ability to completely close off a dampening circuit like that. Do you like it or no? I don't. But I don't like it fully closed. I'm going to back it off and see, like, if the dampening actually works pretty good um, when it's, you know, not fully closed off. It's just weird that you can do that. And it's weird that I'm not using the full travel of that fork either. So I'm going to... I'm gonna back the preload all the way out. Yeah, that's what I was saying. I was like, on my Tawaria, my front fork was so bad. The back was decent. Yeah. The back was, the front, I would get like, it would It would hurt. They dude. would dive, right? Yeah. Like. And you're bottoming, you're, you're hitting at the bottom right. so much to where it like, it's right. metal. Yeah, exactly. These, it feels like you're hitting a bottom end point, but you're not all the way through the travel. So it's yeah. like. I want to get a little more out of it. Yeah, I want to see if I can... If, I want to see if it even goes all the way through, because that's weird. It's not the worst suspension I've ridden out of the box, though. Back in the dampening off definitely feels like it actually moves again. <laughs> yeah. It is fun, though. This bike flows good, and, like, it goes exactly where you tell it to. Like, I just manualed over that, not even thinking about it. And it's... It just feels like, feels playful. Like I think this bike, like the Delaria for example, feels really good in a trail setting, but not in a jumping setting. This bike I think is like, the geometry just feels better. So it would be nice in both a, both a trail setting like this. And then like, I bet if you jump this bike, man, it'd feel awesome. So I like that this comes with a direct mount stem already, but the stem is too low and the bar bend is too low. So I want, I want to raise both of those things. Put better bars, put a better stem, taller one. It desperately needs better foot pegs. And then something about this front fork just isn't adding up to me. Like it legitimately won't go through the full stroke of travel. So I need to, I need to dive into that and see what's going on there. But all in all, it does feel like a slightly quicker light B. I, I don't think that I like the, the front fork on this as much as I do like the light B's KKE. But um, the rear end, that's pretty adjustable. It's a little bit clanky right now, but that kickstand seems to be bouncing a lot. All right, guys, you saw my first ride and things were kind of rattly. I wasn't sure exactly what was going on with the bike. So I ended up taking it back to the shop, went through everything on it. I tried to remove a couple things that I thought might be rattling. So I removed the kickstand and I removed the rear license plate. After kind of looking at the license plate, I don't think that that was too bad, but ultimately going through bolt checking everything, making sure the chain tension was right, um, getting all the adjustment kind of set and dialed in. There were a few bolts that kind of came loose I just went through, checked everything, Loctited things that needed to be Loctite. I talked to 79 Bike and they made it pretty clear that this was a pre-production bike. So they're gonna be going through and checking things better in the factory and making sure that you know you don't have to necessarily go through and bolt check, even though I highly recommend doing that on any bike that you guys get. So anyway, I went through the entire machine. Let's see if it still is rattling like that. So I'm gonna get geared up and we'll go for the first ride 2.0. Let's see how it sounds. Oh, it sounds way better. It's not even like really even making noise right now. That's good. This bike is so much better. It's so playful. Let's dive into some sandy and like off-camber elevation stuff to see how this bike performs on 
kind of difficult terrain. That's wide open there. Climbed up pretty good. Yeah, this bike's actually getting pretty fun now. <laughs> it's windy so hopefully you can hear me but this is a really gnarly uphill very very rocky a lot of pinch points so i want to see how well this bike can climb um truthfully this is not going to be easy so let's see how it goes like a champ so far oh yeah Squeeze it in, bounce it over yeah not bad pinch point fit right through oh, this thing's working good Oh, that part's thick. A uh, little stick. Yeah. I'd call that pretty good. Definitely not bad at all at climbing. Very nimble. Heck yeah, definitely gonna have to cut this right short, holy cow. All right, the wind picked up like crazy, so we're gonna have to call it there, but after going through the entire bike, everything became way more solid. I'm way happier with it now than I was when I first rode it. So, you know, it didn't cost me anything but some tools to go through, and my camera woman is about to fall over. So anyway, uh, if you guys got any questions about the bike, let us know. Don't forget to like and subscribe, appreciate the support.